Well, hello. Welcome to the King of Kings cooking show. I'm Pastor Scott. I'm not only the interim associate pastor here, I'm the sous chef. And a sous chef needs recipes. And what we have are three recipes that we're going to make on our cooking show. And in order to make sure that we've got the correct recipes, um, we're going to use our waffle making machine recipe corrector. Now, why would we do that? Because this is a wandering away from the truth waffle making corrector of recipes. You probably remember from the scripture reading that uh, we are not supposed to wander away from the truth, the truth of God's love, the truth of community that we experience. And so we are going to use these recipes in this recipe corrector and find out if maybe we're a little bit off with our recipes and we'll see how that applies to real life. So the first recipe I have is called banana bread. And so what we're going to do is we're going to see how we can make banana bread. This recipe says we should add Brussels sprouts, smash them up, then go to the fireplace and grab some ashes from the fireplace, mix those in with the Brussels sprouts, and it's going to make great banana bread. So if we run that by our water away from the truth waffle maker recipe corrector, give it just enough time to correct if necessary. Maybe Brussels sprouts and ashes work great, but... And actually, we were wrong. You should actually use bananas. You should use bananas when you're making banana bread. Who knew? And you should use an egg. These are hard boiled, just in case I do drop them here on the altar. Uh, we know that there are all kinds of ways that you can make banana bread, but you probably should never use Brussels sprouts, never use ashes from the fireplace. Use an egg, uh, use a banana, and you're going to get some wonderful banana bread, which didn't get made by me, but did get made by some cooks over at Kowalski's. So the idea of this uh, recipe uh, correcting machine is that we never want to wander away from the truth. And here's our second opportunity, and this is the more practical piece. How to keep your friends, if you're a kid and you have uh, lots of friends you want to uh, make and enjoy time together, and how to make sure people are involved in the church. When they come here, they feel welcome, got a lot of people coming here, people engaged. So it says here on this recipe maker, if you're a kid, if you want to have a lot of friends, what you should do is you should always have the best toys, new toys. And when your friends come over, don't let your friends play with them. Always hang on to your toys. And then it also says when you play games with your friends, you should change the rules so that you always win. This is going to have to go into our recipe corrector, I can tell already. More pertinently, with uh, our church, we want lots of people involved in the church. And the recipe here says how to have a lot of people involved in the church. And one of the things it says is you should give away a free teddy bear to everybody who comes to church. Or if people don't come to church, you should guilt them and say, shame on you. Or if they are still at home in their pajamas, you should send some white panel vans and go grab people and bring them to the church. Or it says you should, once you finally get people here in the pews, you should staple them to the pews so they never leave, so then you never have a problem. They're always involved. We should run this through the recipe corrector machine and give it time to do its thing. Because I actually think there might be some need for some correction here. We've wandered away from the truth of what it looks like to have a friend and have our friends involved in the church. Yep, we were completely off on that whole idea. No teddy bears, no panel vans, no staples, no super glue, uh, no hoarding all the toys. We experience God's love through genuine hospitality. We show the love of Christ. When people come here, we celebrate the fact that they've come. And if they're involved in a virtual way and watching uh, worship and engaging in that way, we celebrate that as well. Wonderful thing that we have our recipe corrector because we might have been doing it the wrong way uh, all along. We have one more recipe, and this is an important one for me personally, and we're going to run it through the recipe corrector. Um, but... Uh, the truth that I have here on this recipe has to do with hair growth. It's now, I have this male pattern baldness that I've been dealing with for about 15, 20 years. And this recipe says, all I have to do is to think hairy thoughts. And I'll have a full head of hair, uh, just like Pastor John, handsome guy that he is. Well, we've uh, run it through the uh, recipe corrector, and it's a simple message. As far as thinking those hairy thoughts, it just says, good luck with that. Well, I want to thank you for joining us for our uh, first and only cooking show. We've already been canceled. Sorry about that. 
but the truth is still true. We want people to know that we are called, it says in the book of James, to not wander away from the truth, not wander away from the truth of the community that we gather here. We celebrate that if there are recipes for disaster, we may not use a waffle maker to correct those recipes. We use God's word. We use the Holy Spirit speaking to us. We celebrate opportunities to correct when we need to. Thanks for joining us. Looking forward to more cooking, but you're going to have to do it on your own because we've been canceled. Sorry about that.